Welcome to Kitchen 143. I am your host, Michelle Avantajado, and I am so blessed to be able to spend time with you today here in the kitchen and, of course, with some of our guests. Living in a diverse community, of course, has so many benefits. Um, the perks here are we get to celebrate New Year's twice. Um, of course, coming up, we know that February 1st is the Chinese New Year celebration, and we will be ushering in the year of the water tiger. Okay, so of course we know that food fits into every celebration that we have here in the Philippines and to think you guys thought you were done with the holidays and that holiday eating. In our family, we actually tend to gravitate towards Chinese food quite a bit, especially when it's a, a birthday or a special occasion, a celebration, and this is because Nino my husband, um, he really enjoys sitting around the table, um, moving that lazy Susan, of course, sharing everything family style. Nothing screams family dining more than that lazy Susan when we're spinning it, right? Okay, so my friends will be joining me today, my friends and my kumare, of course, and um, we're gonna talk about how we can celebrate Chinese New Year at home. Of course, we know we want to keep everyone safe and, of of course, you also know that I like to challenge myself in learning a little bit more about each of the dishes, the cultures, and of course the cuisines that we get to learn about here in Kitchen 143. So I have Lauren C, who's my kumare. So thanks for Lauren for joining me today. We have Louis Chan, her brother, and we have Didi Chu Tang, who's also one of my mommy blogger friends that we've known each other for years as well. Guys, Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, excited. Are you guys Hello. ready? Hello, are you ready to chat about Chinese New Year? Yes, <laughs> for sure, sure. And we're all in costume, well, in the right color at least, right? So, okay, guys watching at home, be sure to watch for the Quiz the Cook questions. You guys know this is where five winners will get to take home a lot of fun things. Okay, so we have from Tim Ho, Tim Ho One, we have Chef's Basket A. We also have from Clean Co, a three hour general deep cleaning and disinfection service to prepare your homes for Chinese New Year. And then also from Lee Kum Ki, we have assorted products. Also on my table today, I'm really excited to have come across this mango sago by Fruits in Bloom. So I will be snacking on that while we are chatting and, of course, learning more about all of the traditions and the different things we can do to prepare for Chinese New Year. For you guys who would like to take home some of these prizes, of course, they're perishable. So you have to have someone that you can send them to in Metro Manila or maybe someone you want to share them with. And um, remember that you have to share the live stream. So go ahead and hit that share button. Make sure that your settings are to public because if we don't see your share, we can't award you the prize. All right, we are broadcasting live today on Rapplers and Mama and Manila's Facebook page also on Rappler's Twitter account and of course the YouTube channel. So you guys can watch any in any of those locations, but if you have questions for us, make sure you leave them in the comment section of the Facebook pages so we can see them. This is also where you need to answer those quiz the cook questions if you want to win. All right, guys, um, make sure you let us know where you're signing in from. I see we have some friends and friends of friends in the comments section. We have KC Cottrell saying, hello, hey, Lauren and Dee Dee. We have Kai from Apples and Dumplings also saying hello. Mike Yamez from Clean Co. Hi, Mike, thanks for partnering with us this week. And of course, some of our usual viewers here. So we have Carrie Dre, we have Christina Perez Lim and Jing Domingo Santos, who just reminded me that today is Didi's birthday. So you guys have to greet her. Make sure you say happy birthday to Didi. Happy birthday, Didi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us, Jing. She's also one of our regular viewers. So I am so glad that you reminded us because this is actually a special day, not for us to just learn about Chinese New Year, but of course for us to celebrate Didi. So Didi, we're celebrating you. Happy birthday. 
<laughs> okay, so let's start with um, the you know what you what you remember celebrating Chinese New Year as a kid. How now all of us have our own families. How you celebrate at home. How the pandemic has changed. How you celebrate Chinese New Year or maybe not. And then let's also um, ask everyone. I'm an ox. What is your lunar? Your lunar sign. So we can start with um, Didi. What's birthday girl? What's your lunar My sign? My lunar sign is sheep. Sheep. Okay. Sheep. And um, remembering Chinese New Year as a kid versus okay. as a kid. As an adult. Um, I remember when I was younger, we would go to the temple. Um, to to pai pai. Pai pai. So that's incense. And then ask for prayers for good luck. And then we would um, eat miswa, that would be the noodles, the birthday noodles. And then right after, we'll just go to the restaurant with um, relatives and have a meal, either lunch or yeah. dinner. So you would, that was you when I was out. younger. Yes, yeah. when I was younger. When I was older, um, when the Taima, Taima is a great grandmother, when she passed, all the families would celebrate on their own. Uh. Okay. But the Miswa so is still a staple. She kept everybody together. Yes. Isn't that? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, Louis, Lauren, you guys are both siblings. Um, so how did you guys celebrate when you were younger? And I think, Lauren, you also have a different perspective because you lived in Singapore for a little while. Yeah. So when we were growing up, it's... Uh, Every Chinese New Year, we look forward to it because we always get the red envelope. So that's the main thing that we were looking forward to. Yeah. Always. <laughs> we have a store. We would all, that's the only time of the year that we were happy to go to our store to help out because dad would usually, what is it, celebrate the Chinese New Year. By the dragon comes. Dragon dancers, lion dancers in our store. So we get to watch. Plus after that, uh, we would eat out with a lot of food like the usual miswa, and we will have ikoi for days. And after that, I think we will go after to the temple. Tikoi for days. I don't mind tikoi for days. So <laughs> my dad started being part of the temple. Yeah. When my dad started being part of the temple, then Louis and I would go to the temple. I think I was around high school back then, and Louis was elementary. So that's, But when we were like growing up, we, we didn't do it. Um, but it was when I was high school, my dad became part of the temple. And so we would go, and that's something that I still continue doing up to now. I, I like that. I like that there are traditions that you guys have taken, whether it's the dishes, right? Like Didi was talking about the miswa or going to the temple. But really, if we're going to sum it up, when we when we celebrate Chinese New Year, it's really all about bringing in the abundance, um, calling in prosperity, of course, and then celebrating long life, right? It's like welcoming all of these wonderful things um, for the next lunar year, correct? Yes. Yes. But Louis and Lauren, you guys didn't tell us what your signs were. Oh so we have a sheep, an ox, and? Our it's all about name. getting together. It's all about wealth, life. I'm the year of the dog. Okay. My first name. Dog. What are you, Louis? Supposed to have me. a lucky year, except love. I don't it's know me. why. Okay. But... okay. Well, I hope we all have a lucky year. And I hope, if not, Lauren, you were actually saying before we even came on cam uh, <laughs> that if there, if it's not considered a lucky year for your sign, there are things you can do. Yeah, you can buy charms. But there's also a temple where... You get to pray, and then they would give you the who, the yellow one, which is supposed to be like your talisman to protect you. And I think what I find more interesting is the these um, talisman wherein their clothes. Why don't you tell them about it, Didi? I've never heard Didi. that before. But yeah, really I never. Ba okay, we my mom used to do it eh, when she was still friends with the ano with the parang high priest of the temple. She would ask us. Um, for a shirt that we would always wear at home. 
it, it does not need to be new. It can be an old one. Basta any shirt siya. Tapos she'll bring it to the temple and have it um, usok-usok. So you can just imagine when she comes home, the shirts, they smell. They, they, there's like a incense. scentsy smell. There's an yes. incense smell. And we're supposed yeah. to wear it that night to sleep. Ah, so you wear it New Year's Eve. You wear yes. it that night. You wear it New Year's Eve. And then you can have it washed, but if you have something, like you have issues or whatever, you can still look for it and then wear it. <laughs> well, that's that sounds lucky. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to ward off all that bad luck, I think that's fun. Okay, um, Lauren, I'm. we talked about um, how... I mentioned earlier how you lived in Singapore, and I know that. Um, yeah, we we just don't accept that it's gonna be a bad year. We have to do something about it. That's you know what it's it's I I agree with that. It's positive thinking. It's doing everything we can do to um, set our minds to it. Right. Um, I think that's fun. But tell me about when you lived in Singapore. You. Um, yeah. You shared a dish. You're gonna share a dish. You'll walk us through it later, but. Um, the traditions there and versus the traditions here, like Didi was mentioning how um, when they would get together, they'd really go out and eat. And then um, you said that some of the things that you learned when you lived abroad were a bit different. Yeah. Yeah, well, to be honest, the Chinese celebrations in the Philippines is a little bit low key compared to other Asian countries. And that's really because that it comes from a very big Christmas celebration, a very big Chinese, um, a, a very big New Year celebration. So actually, um, for most Chinese families, we have already incorporated a lot of the Chinese traditions in, you know, the New Year celebration. Like we will already have the pineapple. We will already yeah. be wearing red. We will already be wearing new clothes. Um, um, we will already be cleaning our house. So a lot of the Chinese New Year stuff, we already get to do December 30, December 31. We've, we've done that. Um, but in Singapore, um, that's where the new year is a little bit more low-key like a party thing but chinese new year is a big thing so right after christmas the malls would be decorated and then when you go to chinatown it's not just ikoi here it's ikoi everywhere there are so many things pineapple tarts almond cookies love letters all sorts of savories Ooh. and you give that you buy that for yourself or you give that to others because on the first day of the Lunar New Year, you should visit relatives, starting from the most senior. So this is what we call Pinean. Um, and then we would visit relatives. Of course, I never got to visit anyone because I didn't have relatives there. In Singapore, sure that yeah. But yeah. when you visit a relative, you, yes, they will, give, that's where now they would give the red packets and then they uh -huh. have oranges so the oranges are exchanged um during this celebration so on like the this. chinese new year's eve um usually well even for us we would eat out because not unless you have a lot of people to help you at home but chinese to prepare. food in general they're very hard to cook there are multiple steps in making chinese food yeah so I don't know about you, but I highly recommend that you would order the chef's platter from Tim Ho Wan. You just have that. Yay for the plug. Um, Chinese dish, you would have to blanch, stir fry. Right. There's just so many things. We normally either order um, order um, um, takeout or we eat out. So in Singapore, they eat out. And this hot pot. Okay. And then it starts. It's like a so, little celebration. After the Chinese New Year, they would go to the relatives. Right. So uh, you were talking about preparing and lots of ingredients and that if you don't want to prepare at home, of course, it's easy to go out. Of course, it's easy to order. We always we we, we do not um, we're not ashamed to do that at all. But for yeah. this episode, you did prepare Yusheng for us. Um, yeah. Can you walk us through how to prepare the significance maybe yes. and the different vegetables and fruits that you used and why it's a lucky dish to prepare. So we can go ahead and roll that video. Yeah, so this, do I talk about it now? Yeah. Yes, you can talk about it. So Yusheng, the star of the show of the Yusheng is the fish, Yu. 
So you means that when you start preparing your sheng, you say yen yen your you, which is abundance of the year. First thing you have to do is you have to prepare all the ingredients. Okay, you just lay them all out on the table so that so that's pepper for wealth, plum sauce for good relationship, oil so that money flows in in all direction. We like that. Um, what else is on the video? Wait, I think it has. And then carrots for good luck, cucumber for eternal use. So wash the veggies because this is raw. This is a raw salad. So after you wash the veggies, you shred them, julienne style, using your knife. And then once you've julienne them, so that's important that you have the cucumber, you have the radish for promotion, the yam, you can dye the yam to red and green, red for eternal youth, and red for good luck. So that's what we do, we dye them. You could use other things, like you could dye... Whoops. So I think what Lauren was going to say was that you could use other vegetables as long as you dye them both red and green because the colors are important here, Louis. Yes, colors are very important because it signifies signify, signify, uh, fortune. So you need to have carrots, uh, cucumber, uh, sweet potatoes, and some fish. I think uh, Lauren used uh, smoked salmon at this part. Then what to do after? You serve it. Uh, you place it. You place it well like that, and after you just toss it. It's like a salad after. Then you celebrate. It's. I think uh, everyone celebrates like this. And then, so here, um, there were some questions. So it looks like, can we substitute peanut with different nuts? I think for this dish. Um, CC de la Cruz, these are the ingredients you need to use for that. Like peanuts, you definitely have to have peanuts because there's a meaning there. Um, the yes. sesame seeds has to have, you have to have that as well, right, Louis? Yes, yes you, need, you can do uh, peanuts uh, for this. You can definitely substitute it. Okay, you can. Okay. And then I know when you serve this, this is like one of those dishes you can actually pull the toddlers in if you want to toss. Yeah, right? because it's a, it's a messy dish. So if you have a toddler or you have a kid, so it's the best thing for, because when you, when you get it, it's like paired nicely. The colors are separate. It's so nice to look at. Then after that, you can destroy it. So you can just throw it up in the air to signify more good luck then you eat it as a salad it's it's fantastic and even the dressing ingredients actually when lauren was walking me through it very simple um yes you can use the lee kum ki ingredients i think there was sesame oil soy sauce plum sauce um very simple and there's meaning behind each one right so each yes. ingredient that is there um there is a uh, purpose in it so yay okay. lauren you're Sorry back that's okay so we were talking about how it's fun to call the toddlers in to toss the salad and that every ingredient in the salad actually has um meaning for calling in the good luck for the for the year yeah so every ingredient would have a meaning so like the carrot is for good luck the radish is for promotion the cucumber is for eternal youth, so the green. And then like if you have the peanuts, that is for wealth that will spread over the floor. So much wealth, it goes through the floor. And then when you drizzle the oil, it is so that wealth flows in in all direction. The pepper wow. is to attract wealth. So yes. everything is about wealth. Right. Having enough life to enjoy it happiness so wealth happiness so those ingredients are pretty um fixed so usually how it's done it's that it's done in a restaurant and then there is the waiter would explain each ingredient as he would serve it so because right. we would do it at, i couldn't order it anywhere here i couldn't order here so i have to figure out how to do it on my own so how I do it here, I don't really just, I don't say the lines because there's a line for fish. So like when you put in fish, you say nyan nyan yo yu, so abundance throughout the year. And then you put in the carrot, you also say another line. I don't do that because I have a five-year-old who just wants to toss she the salad. She wants to toss. 
<laughs> and you know what? The salad was delicious. Thank you for sharing it with me and Nino. I will admit the two of us had it just for ourselves and we didn't share. So um, for the comments, let's see. We have some comments here. Um, Debbie Chua Jacinto says, hi, DD. Um, CC de la Cruz, CD de la Cruz says, I love the color and the varieties and the flavors. It really is um, a, a party in your mouth, CD. Um, you have the crunch, the sweetness of the pomelo, um, you know, the firm carrot, and then of course the peanuts, and then the chippy. Lauren substituted chippy. She said it could also be fried wonton. Okay, so you guys know um, what comes next. We have our first quiz the cook question. Of course, up for grabs. We have Tim Ho Wan's Chef Basket A. We have from Clean Co. and Mike Gamez and his team. We have a three hour general deep cleaning with a disinfection service. From Lee Kum Ki, you have assorted products. And of course, um, we need you to live in Metro Manila or be sharing this prize with someone from Metro Manila. I will actually tell you guys about this radish cake. Um, so Tim Ho Wan has a special for Chinese New Year up until um, Feb 10. If you want to order a whole radish cake like that, you can. It's only $4.88. And this is my favorite. Um, when we have dim sum, radish cake, pan fried radish cake is my first order. So you guys can order a whole one and decide if you want to pan fry it, steam it, or even stir fry it. Um, also, uh, if you are going to order from Tim Ho Wan for Chinese New Year, you can also avail of, you'll get a free single order of um, radish cake if you spend 500 pesos or more. So you guys can go ahead and order from them. They have all your noodles and your dumplings that you would want to order for Chinese New Year. And of course, living in Metro Manila, sharing the live stream with your friends and family and your followers here on Facebook, you know that that will get you at least halfway there. Now you had to have been paying attention because this quiz the cook question, Didi, could you read it for us? Um, 2022 is the year of the blank tiger. Okay, so remember that this is um, the first question in our live stream today. And of course, so the first question is the first person who gets it right. So you have to answer correctly, you have to have shared the live stream, and you have to give us an address within Metro Manila because we have to get you your perishable goods. Okay, so Lauren, welcome back. We have... Yeah. So we have already answered um, our first Quiz the Cook question. Before we go through and find out who won, I do want to let everyone know, you can also let us know where you're watching from. We're really curious. We know that everyone does not, of course, have to be watching from Metro Manila. Of course, we know we have viewers outside. We hope we do. Um, and then uh, here we go. I think we do have a winner. So guys, Go ahead and tell us where you're watching from. And it looks like we have a winner. Our winner is Carol Heath. Congratulations, Carol Heath, for answering correctly for Year of the Water Tiger. Our, our social media team will be getting in touch with you. So make sure you um, provide your delivery address within Metro Manila and, of course, your um, contact information. Okay, so customs. Guys, we talked about our signs. We have an ox, a snake, um, a sheep, and Lauren was a dog, right? So we talked about that and how, um, you know, what it was like for you guys preparing for Chinese New Year. Obviously, I never prepared for Chinese New Year. I never celebrated until I moved to the Philippines. And it's actually such, um, it's such a learning experience for me that I'm enjoying and I'm enjoying sharing it with my kids. And of course, with you guys, my friends, thank you for educating me. Um, but how do we prepare? Um, you know, so like the customs in preparing for the actual day, what are some things that we can do? What are some things that we should not do? Um, did you already start like the most important thing that we have to clean the house? 
we did before did. I, I, we yeah. have to <laughs> um so um cleaning the house is very important before the start of the new year so you usually should do it around jan 25 26 you should already clean the house um because it symbolizes a fresh start Part of cleaning the house would be getting new clothes, but then we do that again for Jan, um, for Jan 1. So, but cleaning the house is very important because you're letting go of all the bad stuff. If you had a bad year, the cleaning of the house is a sign that you're letting go of it, your fresh start. So clean your house, that's the first thing. And everything you look up for Chinese New Year, that's the first thing you should do before you that even makes, celebrate it. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Um, even, even if you talk about like spring cleaning and getting things out, if we're starting the new year that way, it just feels right. So, yeah, uh, you know, right. for us, we would do it even, you know, we do like a massive cleaning after Christmas and we'll do this in our house because our kids, because of course there's now an influx of new toys and new gifts yeah. and new clothes. So now you got to get rid of the clothes that don't fit you anymore and the things that you don't need. So it totally makes sense. Louie, Didi, what are some other things that you do to prepare um, for the new year? Speaking of, I need to get a haircut before February 1st. So, because it's not good luck to get a haircut during the, yes. the Chinese New Year, just because if you cut your hair during the New Year, it symbolizes that you're cutting luck. So, you'd rather start the week before. Um, right. Actually, my sister said that it doesn't apply to your hair. It's every part of your of your body. So, no nails, or everything. Pedicure or done before. So no, all your pampering you needs to be done beforehand. Well, you can yeah. brush your teeth, of course, anytime. You don't cut your teeth anyway. But like cutting your nails, cutting your hair, eyebrow threading, shaving your legs. Don't do that on Jan, uh, on the on, on Feb the 1, or the first day of the, day of the new year. year. Okay. Sweeping so, of the floor. You shouldn't sweep the floor. You shouldn't be the cleaning year. your house. I yeah. think it's an excuse because it's the new year. You shouldn't be doing anything. You should be celebrating the new year itself. You shouldn't do any errands on the day. Also, uh, when buying new clothes, it's also nice. If you, I think you need to buy new shoes as well. Yeah, so, so that you'll go far. you go further because you have new shoes. Yeah, I just don't want to buy it this year because I mean we're on quarantine, so I mean, so where am I going? I don't want to go to the hospital. <laughs> no, no. So I just don't want. To, I will not buy new shoes this year. So new shoes, uh, it's a stay home kind of year. So, and well, then a new new panties, guys, new panties. <laughs> New underwear. Oh, that's true. My mom used to say See? always new everything from top to bottom. Yan. A new okay. panty. So that's that's <laughs> cute. There you go. Didi, how about colors? What I mean, like we're all wearing a color today. So um, everything. red. It has to be red. red. Any shade of red is okay. And um, why red? Just to wear white. Oh, you say hi. Hi, Kaylee. Yes, it's, <laughs> it symbolizes happiness, good luck, those things. Um, wealth. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a tradition eh, to wear red, so it's always red. And sometimes there are certain families who are very sensitive with the red, with the shade of red. You okay. you you can't wear too dark of a red, and you can't okay. wear too light of a red. Why so is sometimes, that? If it's too dark, it's not red anymore. If it's too light, um, it's nearing white. So white and red shouldn't be worn. Yes. Uh, okay. together. Yeah. Right? If, it's, so, um, if it's your birthday, you cannot wear white. Yeah, or the people yeah. around you cannot wear white. Because yeah, and white if is, you get invited, <laughs> don't wear white. I mean, it's classy and all, like a black, a little black dress. But if you get invited to a Chinese New Year party or Chinese birthday, please red is black or white. Yeah, white I read, it has to do with death. Is that correct? Yes. 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 
Okay, so we wear red because it uh, it's symbolizes happiness, good fortune. It also wards off evil evil spirits. So this is good luck, guys. Um, up here, we're all wearing red, of course. Yes. Thank you. Um, but before we go on, I do want to um, share some of our viewers are letting us know where they're watching from. We have um, viewers from Laguna. We also have uh, viewers from Valenzuela, Mandaluyong, um, Paranaque. So it's Makati, Kalaokan. Thanks, guys. We're so happy to have you here. Um, and of course, we are not only celebrating um, or welcoming the Chinese New Year, we are celebrating Dee Dee's birthday. So, guys, make That's sure why to greet her. her. Greet her and see, you. we're all we're wearing red for you too, Dee Dee. And, um, um, and we say Kyong Hee, right? We don't say the entire Kong Hee, Pak Choi. We don't, we don't, we just say Kyong Hee. That's how we just say it for New okay. Year when we greet somebody. That's it. Okay. Say it again, Dee Dee. Kyong Hee. Yes. Kyong Hee. Yeah, that's it's kind that's of sing song <laughs> Okay, so guys, I did do a little bit of homework. I wanted to, um, I really wanted to dive in. And whenever we have these episodes where I get to learn about something new, yeah, I really it. try my best. So Lauren said dumplings are very important. It's something yes. that, um, that we enjoy during Chinese New Year. So, and fish, whole fish. So I did talk to my friend Janice and also another friend, um, when I was researching, I, I messaged all of my Facebook friends who were Chinese, who I saw celebrate the holiday, and I asked different questions, right? So I learned that the fish, we need to have a whole fish to steam. And I learned that from Lauren that dumplings are a thing. So I yes. tried making my own dumplings. And it's hard. <laughs> Admittedly, it was not easy, but I feel <laughs> like if I did it again, I would be able to, um, I have my dumplings steaming on the stove. But if I did it again, I feel like I would be able to, like the muscle memory, Louis, is that something? Like chefs actually have muscle memory when they yes. do stuff like that. Right? So, like if they do that eight hours, 12 hours every day for the rest for the entire week, they probably can do it in their sleep. In their sleep. Well, so okay. I, I realized that of course my dumplings at the end of my sesh were much nicer than the dumplings in the beginning. But I'll share them with you and of course I'll share the recipe. So guys, you know that any recipe that I share here you can also look for in the Thursday column. Um, and of course, now you can also look for the videos. So let's show how to make um, steamed pork dumplings. So with this, I really um, wanted to make things easier for myself. I did not hand roll my dough. Um, I just bought dough in the grocery store, the little dumpling wrappers, very easy. I saw there were kind of two colors. So I got two colors just to change it up a little. This is ground pork with a little bit of fat, um, minced garlic, minced ginger, cornstarch, um, a little bit of sugar. I actually put um, half what the recipe called for. Um, green onion, quite a bit of green onion and um, Baguio pechai. So you put salt on the pechai and then you squeeze the water out so that your dumplings aren't too watery, you're filling. So squeeze out the water and then throw that into your meat mixture with your egg. So once you put the egg in, you, um, you can mix it all up, but the secret here, or maybe the not so secret, of course, is sesame oil, um, oyster sauce, very easy to make with Lee Kum Pee and um, soy sauce, the premium soy sauce. Very simple ingredients. These are things that you probably have in the house. Um, and really all you have to get is the wrapper. So I, of course, I watched some videos on how to fold and different from Yosa, Yosa folds, you fold in one direction. And then with these dumplings, you have to fold towards the center. 
So once I got the hang of it, I was able to kind of figure that out. Um, but there's so many different ways uh, you could fold them. And it's fun, actually. Mm -hmm. With the bigger kids, I would probably get them in on this. But with Jelly, who kind of puts her hands in her mouth a lot, I wouldn't do raw pork with her. Um, but the big kids, obviously, they like making their own raviolis and their own pasta. So this is something that we could do together. Um, I realized right away that if I didn't have a wet paper towel on top of my wrappers, that they would dry out and get hard very quickly. So you could use a wet paper towel or you could use um, maybe a, a clean dish cloth that was a little bit damp to just put on top. Um, and these are really fun. I actually am steaming some now in case my cameraman, my ex-boyfriend would like to eat them. <laughs> so I have them ready for him. We picked up these very practical steamers when we went to also um, go buy the fish and some of the ingredients in Cartimar. I really wanted to look for a bamboo steamer, um, but because I was short on time, I felt these were very practical and I knew I had a pot at home that I could just pop them on top of. Very easy, easy to clean, um, super, super yummy too. Yeah. So the sauce that I made for this was just the premium soy sauce and some black vinegar. And, um, you know, we just dipped, dip and enjoy. So that was really yummy. Have you guys tried making dumplings before? No, but we no, should. But we, should. Um, um, we, we, we usually we just buy the dumplings um, because they're hard to make, but they're the dumplings are very important in a Chinese New Year. So jiaozi, so that's what we call them. And the symbol of um, dumplings is wealth because they're like the golden nuggets. So you should eat that. It's like grapes during, you know, the Western New Year. You really okay. need to have dumplings um, during your Chinese New Year celebration because it's money and we, you know, we love money. And then one of the most interesting thing is that, of course, Chinese, um, especially when you're in China, Chinese New Year is the time that you would travel for hours, for days to go to your hometown. It's true. And so, you know, it's not like just I cross across to Mish's condo. <laughs> no, people go go travel. travel talaga. Yeah, they do. And then it's really and like then, yeah. Yeah, so everybody's there. So you know, if you've watched cr Crazy Rich Asian, where they would make their own dumplings, when yeah. you're making dumplings, that's the time for you to catch up and talk with each other. So, so that's why it's a good thing to do. Like, um, if you want to be like Crazy Rich Asian kind of thing, you could make it with your family. But but essentially, it forms a a function in the gathering because it allows people to talk to come together. Yeah, it's a bit awkward yeah. if I just talk to you without doing well, anything, right? But when we're doing I, something, conversation would flow about... Yeah, hey, then it's productive. The favorite question in all Chinese New Year family reunion are two things. <laughs> Number one, are you getting married? When are you getting married? And when are you having a baby? So, okay. So I think we, that's won't, what I've we won't shame anyone here. It's okay if you're not married yet, guys. Here <laughs> um, in Kitchen yeah. One Person, you can help me and I won't ask that's you those stressful. questions. But so, seriously, okay. that's a stressful part. Some people would actually rent girlfriends for that day. Oh, goodness. Yes. I'd, I'd rather spend that money on food than rent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's talk about steamed fish. I'll share this recipe very quickly with you. Very easy to make. Um, again, it's a, di a very traditional dish that everybody serves, right? It needs to have um, from the head to the tail. And we'll show this video really quick and then we'll have a quiz the cook question. So for this um, fish, Nino and I, we went to the fish market and this fish was actually swimming around in the tank before we, um, before we picked it up. Uh, I realized when the fishmonger cleaned it, he cleaned it in a way that kind of left the, the fish, he pulled from the mouth up instead of slicing the belly. Um, and I don't know why he did that, but I realized that that also kind of may be the reason why my fish bowed. 
Here, the important ingredients fresh are ginger, scallion, the green onion, and um, coriander. I am probably the only one in my house that enjoys coriander, or otherwise known as wan soy. That's a thing um, there's a lot of people that doesn't love wonsoy. Yeah, so I like it, and the rest of my family says it tastes like soap. So I guess they got the gene from Nino where they say it tastes like soap. Um, here we just chop everything up and we put it um, on the plate, stuff the inside of the fish. Here I put the ginger so that the fish doesn't stick. It's kind of like a little rack where you steam the fish on it so it will stay intact. I put ginger inside, so bigger pieces of ginger inside with the scallions. Um, and then we just steam it. Very easy to do. This actually, Nino makes this quite often for us. This was the first time I made it all by myself because he usually takes charge of this dish. Um, I will tell a story. When I was in college, um, I brought one of my college roommates and my mom put a fish on the table and there was, like always, it had a head and it had a tail and my friend freaked out because she had no idea what it was and she grabbed my arm and she was like what is that and i said it's a fish what do you mean you've never seen a fish like this yeah, and she yeah. said it has a head and a tail and i said fish usually have heads and tails so she had never seen a fish other than fillet so i realized how um lucky i was to be able to know and try these different types of food growing up. So on top, I put uh, the soy sauce and the sesame oil. I heated up just canola oil and Didi did mention using peanut oil is so much yummier. So I'll try that next time, but it looks so pretty. It's so yummy. And I know that this is super healthy. So for me, um, this is actually one of my favorites. I really love steam fish and you know, even the kids, they'll take their bowl of rice and then just put the fish on top after Nino gets it off the bone for them. So even with that, you know, that actually is something we really enjoy. So I also know one of the things that, you know, I learned from eating in the different restaurants that we enjoy, you're not supposed to flip the fish over, correct? Yes. Bam. Yes. Yeah. So you just... You remove okay, the bone yeah, and then yeah. you can get it. I think if you get the fish, you can get it. So that's why. Okay. All right. So, guys, we um, are ready for another quiz the cook question. Um, of course, as always, we need you to share the live stream on your Facebook profile. Make sure it's set to public so we can see. This is what is this? This is the second question or the third? Second. This is the second question. Um, what is the significance of wearing the color red during Chinese New Year? So you guys, we talked about this earlier, but up for grabs. So you know, we have Kim Ho Wan's Chef Basket A. We have CleanCo, your three hours general deep cleaning with disinfection service. Obviously, um, this is going to prepare us in um, cleaning and preparing for the new year. And then we also have assorted products from Lee Kum Ki. So you guys can take advantage, order some, um, a whole radish cake as well from Lee Kum Ki. And um, as long as you get the answer correctly. So remember, this is the second question, which means one, four, three. The fourth person to answer correctly who has shared the live stream and lives in Metro Manila will get to take home all of these fun prizes, okay? And I think we have um, quite a few answers. So you guys, I don't know if you guys can see, we have our chat box that we have in our, in our stream yard, right? On the right side, you have comments. So if you guys wanted to actually see what everybody's commenting, you can go ahead and click that. And you'll see that we have all of our viewers really tuning in, super excited to win. And I think we have a winner. So our winner is Steffi Joyce She. Congratulations, Steffi. Yeah. You answered correctly. 
with wealth, good luck, and happiness. Congratulations, and be sure to um, go ahead and answer the team when they ask you for your address and your contact information. So we've talked about how you guys prepared when you were younger or how your family's prepared and how you celebrate. We talk about how you prepare now, um, you know, even from like grooming and things. What do you do during the Chinese New Year? So this would be like, you've now, you know, now it's the next day. Um, how do you, um, you know, what, how do you celebrate? So usually, um, I'll talk first about, you know, the most, um, Chinese families, okay, so that because mine's a little bit different, so I'll just set the tone first. So usually what happens is that you have to remember that the Chinese New Year's Eve, it's a working day here in the Philippines. So we all have to go to work, our stores would be open, we will not be at home making all these dishes. So usually after our stores are closed, after our, we, we go off work, that's when we would have Chinese New Year dinner or reunion dinner, as we would call it, with our family. And then the next day, that's when we would go to the temple. I do it quite um, differently because I have a daughter and I want to make a memorable day out of it. So what we would usually do is that we would make... Um, pineapple or whatever cookies a uh, couple of days before and on the day itself i would prepare the yusheng sorry i never got to talk a lot about it but um we would prepare that and then hot pot the hot pot for me i find it's very important to be on the table because when you have the hot pot people stay longer on the table and mm. i think that there's a functionality to it because in this um this time of the year it's cold in china and taiwan and all that so having a hot pot it's it's comforting so we would um prepare the hot pot the yusheng and then the rest would just be takeout we try to eat as fast as we can like we're done by eight because okay. we would have to go my family would have to go to the temple by nine okay because the temple has a lot of activities like booth uh, dragon dance the god of wealth comes in i mean it's like the entire activity we stay there until 12. my pet my my in-laws would go to the temple the next day and then we would have lunch with our in-laws the next day which is the first day of the lunar new year that's how my family would celebrate it okay um so temple um, do you guys go and visit family also? I know there's like little red envelopes. Didi, do you guys go and see um, extended family? We used to do that when the when my great grandmother was alive. Um, we would go to my maternal great grandmother's side. So all the siblings of my grandfather, um, their kids. The grandkids, everybody would see one another. And then there will be an exchange of the angpao. But yeah. we don't do it anymore. <laughs> right now, mm -hmm. what we do is we just celebrate it with our, with, the, with our families. Let's say like with your side or with your husband's side. So you just get to pick if you would want to have dinner the night before the Chinese New Year's Eve or the Chinese New Year um, lunch or dinner. Right. So that's how it is now. Right. And well, I sure the pandemic and quarantine living yeah, has no. the way we all celebrate it. Louis, how about you? Um, what are some of the other things that you look for on the table when we eat and um, tradition wise that you would like to do with your, you have a baby boy, no? Yes. Yes. A old baby boy. Um, but for our family, uh, during Chinese New Year, my dad would always be like, it's always going to be the store will be open just because it's very important that during the Chinese New Year, there should be money coming in. So that signifies if money comes in during the Chinese New Year, it's going to start the entire year. So there's money always coming in. So that's that's the Chinese New Year that I've grown up on. And, and the dragons come to your store. The dragon comes to the store anyway. So, so it's, go to well, it's a good experience as well. I'm always but, mesmerized by the dragon. Yes. Give them money when they come I, to the store. It's there to ward off evil spirits, to bring in good fortune. Uh, and they also get the, what is this? It's nice if you hang the red, uh, the ang in a very high place in your store. They because they'll try it. to get it. 
Yeah. So that's a nice. We, that's a nice Louis and I would would work during Chinese New Year, but we don't mind because the dragons are because coming, so it's fun for for us. Fun. So okay. Wait at the end of the day if the ang um, pause are sick or not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you got to figure that out quite early on as a kid. So we yeah. talked about um, the different foods. I know that oranges and mandarins are quite popular as well. And even um, Louis, what you, the recipe that you shared, pineapple tarts. Um, there's meaning behind all of these dishes besides the dumpling and the fish and the yushan. Um, yes. Tell us about that. I think the pineapple tarts are not as prevalent as a dessert here in the Philippines. I think they're more uh, commonplace in Singapore than Taiwan. Not really here in the Philippines because I think what most people associate the dessert during Chinese New Year is the tikoi. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. A, it is a dessert, but it's not really meant for it. It's meant for because it's sticky. Then yeah, right. so it means for together. But uh, in Singapore. Uh, what they usually eat for desserts are either cookies or apple tarts. Okay. Apple tarts, meaning the Chinese word for apple tart is called ong lai. Mm -hmm. uh, the literal translation for it is ong fortune and lai is come. So come good fortune. fortune. Okay. So that's more prevalent in other countries, not here in the Philippines, because I think most people here only know about ikoi. No, ikoi, yeah. Uh, so I never even realized, um, of course, I love tikoi. <laughs> and I never realized when people were gifting me tikoi, it was actually also their way of saying, let's stick together. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Unity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I never even knew that, you know, from like biz people that I would do business with, clients or different things. And then, of course, friends. Um, who would give me tikoi and I didn't realize so guys everyone who's given me tikoi thank you so much I still want to stick together and be your friend and be your <laughs> Send them over. Right? so um, I love that and then of course there's also noodles so even on our table today Tim Ho Wan and the Chef Basket A we have noodles here um, noodles are also very significant how come they're significant Didi they symbolize long life yes and who doesn't want to live long? I want to live long. I want to see my grandkids. We want grandkids. well. Yeah. We want well. And then the long life we enjoy. <laughs> that's the, yes. whole, the meaning of most dishes. There you go. So that's a that's actually if you re, if we were going to sum it up, a lot of the dishes all have similar meanings in terms of abundance, long life, sticking together, bringing in the good, um, and welcoming you know everything for prosperity. I so Louis shared pineapple tarts as a recipe. I shared almond cookies, and when I was researching almond cookies, so I love almond cookies. I have almond flour because. Um, prior to celebrating Chinese New Year, I've been trying to do keto. I'm failing miserably right now, but um, the almond cookies I wanted to share because I also realized when in my research that it um, the almond actually symbolizes good luck. It's like the round shape. So you guys will see that I, you know, what I baked, it's almost like a gold coin, right? It symbolizes coin. So again, it symbolizes money and abundance in that sense. And so Louie, why don't you and I, we'll start with your pineapple tarts. We'll walk everyone through if they wanna make these at home and then I'll share my almond cookies. Okay, so basically almond uh, pineapple tarts are very easy. Are very easy. Um, the dough itself, if you uh, it's more a little bit what's a blade than an actual cookie. So it's just butter, cake flour, powdered sugar, cornstarch, and I added cream cheese just because I had cream cheese lying around. Uh, one egg yolk and vanilla essence. It's more, it's a really crumbly uh, cookie tart. There's a lot of versions for this. I think the Taiwan ver the Taiwanese version is very soft. It's like popia, the dough. Okay. So what I'm, so what I'm doing here, uh, I'm just mixing things by hand so everyone can do this. We don't need to have any fancy tools. Oh, yeah. But if, but if you have a stand mixer, it could be faster, mm -hmm. easy. Um, then you, after mixing the dough with uh, mixing the dough, you can just wrap it and put it in the chiller for a few minutes so it hardens. Now here I'm gonna make the pineapple jam. You don't have to do this. 
So I'm adding olive oil in and I'm grilling it. You don't have to do this, but I like the grill flavor with the, the pineapple. It just adds another layer. Yeah, it's always when I drink with my French chef before, it's always you add your, your building flavors. So you just dice after grilling, you just dice them up, um, put it in the in a pot, then add a little bit of sugar. So I think this is uh, 800 grams of pineapple with 100 grams of sugar, so it can help it uh, caramelize. Then here I'm adding rum, just because the chef also needs, uh, it's an excuse for the chef to drink a little bit. <laughs> Pineapple and rum are really, are really two pieces in a pot. They go really together so well. Yes, and you can add uh, uh, other spices as well, like cinnamon bark and uh, spar anise. Then you just let it cook down until it becomes a jam. It takes a, it takes a few minutes though for the jam okay. to reduce. Yeah. Then, you but if you didn't want to do that, you could just buy the jam, right? Yes. How you... If you don't want to make your own pineapple jam, you can definitely just buy the store-bought jams and just use that one. Right. And after this, you're going to shape your cookies. Here, you can do more festive. This is the, the simplest one that I have. So it's just, you just use a cookie cutter and just ball the, the pineapple jam. But you can take it a step further, you can add, you can have a mold that looks like a pineapple. Like the ones that I sell out of my home kitchen called Burn. This. Okay. It really looks like a pineapple. I know, I saw those. You should share them. Yeah, but those, those, are, are, cute. Hard, those are hard to make because you, you make it like a dumpling as well. You have to beat then put it in a mold. And you, yeah, you need the mold yes. for that. The easier one, if anyone can do this, like during Chinese New Year, the night before, you can do this with your kid. It's easy. Super fun. And it, it does look easy enough to do with the kids. I love yes. that it looks yeah. like it's just a simple yeah. short bread right crust. So there are actually yeah. a lot of sweets during Chinese New Year, not just decoy. Almond almond cookies are the the best, they're diff different versions. But the reason that we have a lot of sweets, it's not so much practiced here in the Philippines because we just tend to have one gathering, like one dinner, one lunch. But usually when you visit, like during the Pinyin, where you visit, which is called the visitation, when you visit yeah. a person's house, well, they're supposed to serve you something. So right. remember, Mish, that plate that I gave you? So that's yeah. where they would put the different assortment and they would serve whoever visits. And the people who visit, they don't stay there for five hours. They're just literally there to, to pass get by pal, say hi, greet, and then they eat a little bit of those sweets. So, so that's why you like have a lot of assortment. Yeah, so it's really just... Um, it's really just to pay respects and say hello. And of course, for the kids to collect on Pao and, and then of course have a snack and maybe some tea. I want to you show get you- an my... Pao until you're married. Until Ooh. you're married, you get an Wait, guys, yes. another reason you don't have to hurry to get married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I want to show my, my dumpling. Yeah. Oh my God. Here we go. I don't know, can you there see it? So <laughs> Can, you back to my bed? Can I drop by? Yes, of course. <laughs> I will send them to you, Kumars. Okay, so um, I wanted to show you my dumplings. And then, of course, um, now I can share my almond cookie recipe with everyone. Very simple, very easy to make. And I actually have been noshing on them since we baked them. So I will share those almond cookies with you guys now. We have lots of um, our commenters, our viewers. So there, um, Lauren, is this how you would find the little snacks when you go and visit? Yes, it's just that the oranges would be placed somewhere. Like that would somewhere be like probably nuts in the middle. Okay. Well, so here I just softened my butter. Um, on the side, and then I blend in my all-purpose flour, my almond flour, uh, salt, baking powder, and yeah, so I mix that up, because those are all the dry ingredients first. Um, and then I will cream the butter. So creaming the butter and the sugar. Normally I would do this in a hand mixer or in the kitchen aid. Um, but because I wanted to do everything on camera for you guys, I did it by hand, the same way Louie did. 
Um, tips and tricks when baking, crack your egg into a separate bowl so that if you accidentally get your shells, you don't want them to destroy your dough and you're like picking through dough, taking out shells. So you always crack your egg separate and then add it into your dough. We mix this until it's light and fluffy. And then we take the dry ingredients and um, mix them in. So I did it in half batches. So I put um, once and then blended it and then put it in a second time. So I didn't feel like my arm was gonna fall off because I was doing it by hand. Here I used a one ounce scoop and then I actually um, cut it in half because I wanted them to be really small. Um, this cookie is not very sweet. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, we also put almond extract in it as well. But here we use, you roll it up, use um, a little measuring spoon. I blanched almonds ahead of time, put them on top and then just use an egg wash. Um, the egg wash gives it a, a rich yellow color. Um, it's not an overly sweet cookie. I can actually pop like two or three of these at the same time, um, which is probably not a good thing if I'm trying to stay on keto. And then of course bake, uh, bake for like 12 minutes. What I did was um, when we went to Cartamar to get some of the ingredients that I needed to shoot, Nino showed me this one little story that he found where all these like Chinese pastries were. So I picked up popia with tikoi, um, macarons and pineapple tarts as well. So I put them all there. So I did learn. So Lauren said I should put the nuts there instead. And I will do that next time for Feb 1. Um, but this time I just put the cookies straight out of the oven. And before I knew it, there were little hands coming to steal the cookies anyway. So very easy. Um, Actually, I think it's a perfect gift. If I was going to gift this to someone, you could put it yeah, in a nice yeah. tin or a little cookie jar um, and yeah, very yeah. easy to make. So guys, with that being said, we have our third Quiz the Cook question. Um, we have up for grabs a Tim Ho Wan's Chef Basket A. We have from Clean Co. three hours of a general deep cleaning and disinfection service so you can get your house ready for Chinese New Year. And from Lee Kum Ki, of course, we have some assorted products. We hope that you live in Metro Manila or that you know someone who lives in Metro Manila so you can share the love. And of course, please share the live stream. We know that hashtag sharing is caring and we want everyone to learn about the different ways they could celebrate Chinese New Year from our friends here, Lauren, Didi, and of course, Louie, telling us all about how they celebrate and how you could celebrate at home as well. So um, Louie, could you read the next question, question number three for us so that they can answer? In Chinese superstition, why is it not advisable to cut your hair during the Lunar New Year? Okay, so we talked about this, and then of course we talked about grooming and all the different things that we could do. Um, of course, guys, we are learning, this is the beauty of Kitchen 143, it's not just about learning the dishes or the food or how to bring the food to the table for your loved ones, it's also the meaning behind it. And I think this is the beauty of, you know, this is why I really love what I do. I get to learn so many new things. Um, you know, hashtag work in progress. I am always excited uh, to learn about the different customs and the cultures and of course the cuisines. So, um, Didi, what are you looking forward to for the year of the water tiger? Um, what ba? More luck, <laughs> good health for everyone. Hoping that COVID would subside na soon. Agree. That's it. I am with you in that. Louie, how about you? What are some of the things that you're looking forward to? To travel. Yeah. To travel anywhere. <laughs> and not just down the road. <laughs> not just down the road. Manila <laughs> na. few hundred miles. Not just down the road. So Lauren, before we get to you and what you're looking forward to, we will announce our winner. We have Ed, Eddie, Ed, Edili, Bongdi, Bongai. So congratulations, Edili Bongai. I, I'm butchering your name. I am so sorry. Edieli. You're, you don't want to cut your hair 
um, because you would be cutting away the luck. So it's bad luck. Very good. Um, and that was the third person. One, four, three, four, four. Right. So that was the third person. He was the third person to answer correctly. Thank you. Make sure that you um, answer our social media team when they reach out to you so that we can get you your prizes, of course, within Metro Manila. We don't want to cut any of that good luck or wealth away. OK, guys. Um, his, yes. OK, so here we go. Uh, Lauren, what are you looking forward to? Just good health for, for everyone. That's it. And then probably to go to Louis' kitchen. That's I want to go to Louis' kitchen. That's it. Let's go <laughs> together. Who else wants to go to Louis' kitchen? We and can get all lessons. Go to Thank lessons. you to my design team and contractors. <laughs> there you go. That's okay. all. So good health and me for, for me to travel to Louis' kitchen. They just That's want it. me to cook for them. <laughs> Well, you know what? During that time when you're cooking for them, you can, of course, catch up. And oh, um, yes, of course, I'm sure Lauren would love to spend time with your baby boy and baby G would love to spend time with her baby cousin. So um, I hope that you guys can do that, too. I am looking forward to good health. Yes, same. Um, traveling, that would be nice, too. Um, breakthrough. I'm looking forward to some breakthrough. And uh, of course, hoping that we are somehow coming out of this pandemic and that um <laughs> and that the the last few health challenges that so many of our friends and family have been facing are you know behind us let's hope that okay guys we have the fourth quiz the cook question um but before we do that i'm just going to check in with our viewers i want to say hello and see yep Travel. So Raisel Anthony Ross Lobo is saying, that's right, Louis, travel again. He would like to travel too. Um, and then, of course, um, we are so excited. Yes, we are so excited. Adil says, Adili says, thank you. Guys, quiz the cook question number four. Remember that you should be watching from the Rappler or the Mama in Manila Facebook page what do noodles symbolize while you guys are answering that very easy question we will show you what you'll be getting from tim ho wan which is chef basket a of course you'll also be collecting the opportunity to clean your home with clean co and mike gamez for a three-hour general deep cleaning and disinfection service and of course when we come key should you want to try any of these dishes at home in creating them in your own kitchen with your kids or with everyone who you love around you um, Lee Kum Key assorted products. Remember that you must live in Metro Manila or be sending these products to Metro Manila because they are perishable. And of course, um, sharing the live stream is just as important too. Remember, hashtag sharing is caring. Um, guys, thank you so much for sharing so much of yourselves today. Um, I am just over the moon that we got to do this episode and learn so much. I know I learned a lot. And of course, my viewers learned a lot. Our viewers learned a lot. So while we're waiting for the answers to question number four. So remember, guys, we have five questions. It's one, four, three, four, four. So question number four, we will get the fourth person who answers correctly. Um, and of course, you will get to receive your prizes delivered to your home in Metro Manila. And it looks like we have a winner. Congratulations, Germadia Lynn. The answer is correct. Noodles symbolizes long life. We all want a long life and celebrating Chinese New Year this way. Of course, hopefully the noodles, the dumplings, the cookies, the pineapple tarts, and of course, even the mandarin oranges will bring in all that wealth, prosperity, luck, and of course, the long life. And celebrating with all of our friends and family around us, of course, is um, the way we would love to do it. So let's just make sure we do that safely. Okay, so we have one more quiz to quick quiz the cook question. But before we do that, that will be the last thing we do. Um, Louis, tell us where uh, followers can 
um, find you and learn more about um, what what you're baking up in the burnt bakery? Oh, actually, I'm just a home baker. You can follow my products at my Instagram page at burnt bakery ph. Um, at this point, I think most of my family and friends are the one are my clients. I just sell out immediately for, just because of them. Well, that's it. But, uh, in the future, we'll, uh, we'll try to sell for the public. But now we're still on a dry run, so it's still family and friends. Well, that's good. I'm glad I'm a friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the kitchen moves when I move. The kitchen is technically just me. Just like Kitchen 143. I have actually had some episodes when I was in Boston and even in Florida. So that's the beauty in um, you know, how we have adapted because of COVID and because of quarantine and because you know, we had to actually be able to still do what we love um, despite all the challenges. So, okay, um, Didi, where can the viewers follow you, find you if they wanna learn more, if they have questions? I know you also have a quarantine baby. Um, I actually am a big fan of your focaccia. So why don't you tell everybody where they can follow you? Yay, thank you. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook for my blog and for whatever things random stuff that's candish that's c-a-n-d-i-s three h's so h h h and then for the focaccia thank you for supporting me it's a my quarantine baby um i bake them at home um you can find them candish bakes that's you know it's so amazing i know we've talked about this before and i know that that's obviously it wasn't your plan um but you fell into it and now you're like the focaccia queen. Everybody loves your Even my cousins order from you. Right? Hi, Jojo. Fantastic. Okay, Lauren, tell us, um, tell the viewers where they can find you. You have a, quite a few different accounts they could follow. And of course, um, if they I are- I try to parents, be in hiding. <laughs> if they are parents or if they are, you know, mindful mamas, who you know would like advice or even breastfeeding tips? Tell us all about the accounts I can follow for for you as well. Well, um, I work for milkandhoney.ph. You can find us in Instagram, and I also brought Haka to the Philippines, so you could also find me in at Haka Philippines. Okay. On my personal account, you could just contact Louis, and he'll pass the question to me or Didi. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so um, before we do our last question, I will share Alexis D. De Cash, uh, Alexis De Castro Villa Panda, Panada. Um, hello, Louis. I am Bob's sister. So Alexis is saying hello, Louis. You have fans. Alexis. You Alexis. have fans here. And guys. The show is not over. We still have one more question, one more quiz. The cook. I know you guys are excited. This is your last chance to win. Make sure you have shared the live stream from either the Rattler or the Mama and Manila Facebook page. You need to be commenting from there as well. This is the fifth question, so that means it's one, four, three, four, four. Fourth person to answer correctly will win all of these delicious and fun prizes. Of course, we have Lee Kum Ki assorted products. You'll also get Chef's Basket A from Tim Ho Wan. Should you you love dumplings and noodles the way we do. And of course, you'll to prepare your home for Chinese New Year, you'll also have a three hour deep cleaning and disinfection process from Mike Gamez over at Clean Co. So you guys can get your keyboards ready. Um, we remember you must also have a friend or family or um, someone you love that you would like to share with in Metro Manila. So here is the last question. What does the almond in the almond cookies symbolize? So once we have that answer, of course, while we're waiting, we can chat a little bit more. I know you guys are all um, quite busy. Looks like you're busy already. Are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I actually okay. wanted to add, um, 
we haven't talked about, but you're not support, supposed to serve things in four. Like if you have mandarin oranges, they're never in four. Cookies are never in four. Ulams are never in four. So uh, the auspicious number would be eight, of course. So if not eight, six or ten. But so if you have dishes, like never just four dishes. Everything should be good numbers as well. Yes, so four is not a good number in Chinese like, culture. Like no four oranges, no four. No, because oranges. the num the number four, the Chinese symbol for number four, looks like a casket. No, it's su. Su means death. Sounds like death. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. So yes, I did know that. Um, Nino and I actually, um, when I was even putting the the desserts that we bought already, the little cookies and the hopia and the things, he kept reminding me, don't put four, don't put, I'm like, I know I'm not gonna put four. <laughs> so I did either yeah. three or five, and then the almond yeah. cookies, I did eight, because I know that yeah. is also a, a number. Yeah. Um, okay, so it looks like we have, I don't know, Nino looks like he's telling me something with something. Um, we have lots of comments here. He's telling us we have lots of comments for everybody who's answering. So guys, we love that you're so active. Of course, our partners love that too when you share. Um, and it looks like we have a winner. Um, we have a winner, answer number four, Carrie Dre. Four. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, the almond symbolizes good luck and fortune. Very good. You were listening. Guys, that's all we have time for today. Lauren, Louis, Didi, thank you for joining me on camera. I'm so blessed by our friendship and, of course, by you guys sharing some fun things and recipes with me and all of our viewers. Um, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. And how do we greet everyone? Ladies, how should we Kyung greet them? Kyunghi. But that's long. <laughs> okay. They don't say na no si Kong si Fatai. They don't say it. Bye bye. That's it. Thank bye. you. Kyong ki, kyong ki.